Hey everybody, Dan Romich here. It's uh, Friday afternoon, University of Options. This is your uh, daily trade recap and market update. I'm going to start with the market update, but first I'll just, uh, spoiler alert, another great day. Uh, I went 6-0 and and Lee went 7-0. and I'll go over those trades in a minute. Yesterday we had 100% win rate. Our 7-day run rate is 87.5 and our 30-day run rate is 88.4. So, um, doing well i'll show you real quick here yes uh no there's one trade on here that's missing i went six and oh and that was a uh, eight cents so 38 sorry guys um and i think that's where lee ended up so not bad um although today was it wasn't easy i know it might look easy when you see six and oh and seven and oh um but I would say most every trade was a challenge. Most every trade uh, tested, um, you know, your strength as a trader. So we'll go through those in a bit. Let's look at the market update real quick. So um, this is very interesting because the market did rally uh, quite a bit today. And yet the options flow is just straight on down. So I'm not sure what we're going to be looking at on Monday. Um, it's really the wild card is the debt ceiling, as you know. Um, and I think the rally today was because some positive comments came out of the debt ceiling talks. But the news today really, although some of it was good for the economy, all of it was bad for bonds and for interest rates. And that should have cratered the stock market, but it did not. So I'm going to kind of chalk that up to debt ceiling, but I will just say this could be hedging sometimes. Um, but, you know, typically when we see this negative options flow, price will follow. And then the dealer hedging again, it's just still green, uh, real green. So uh, dealers are still very bearish here. Remember, this is an opposite indicator. And then the gamma uh, exposure it's back down again. It, it jumped up a little bit yesterday, but um, the dealers still have a whole bunch of exposure kind of between 415 and 419. And it looks like mostly negative exposure. So that's just another potential um, concern for, for um, Tuesday. Monday's a holiday, obviously. Yeah, today, the dark pulls were um, big and frequent. Uh, most of them came in. The, most of the... The real meaningful ones are the ones that show here, 4.14.65. But there are several others, and it's really uh, important to notice. Uh, so 4.18.60, big level, and 4.14.65, big level. And if you look, the market did open right on top of uh, this 4.14. Where are we? 4.14.60. And then it just ran like crazy um, and it got hung up in a couple of different places. Let me pull up. Yeah, I think I, I think I marked a lot of these pages. So uh, 414.60 was right here. So this was a key area and you can see that um, the market opened. What? I guess I got rid of the important one. So the market, oh, there it is, sorry, 414.47. That was the big one. Uh, and the market opened right on top of it and just shot up. So that tells you all of these dark pulls were, were bullish trades. Again, these institutions hide them very well. That's their job. Uh, and then you can see we had this massive uh, top here at four. 1968 we had a pretty tough time breaking through it and um that relates to actually that's 41920 anyway all in here was kind of layered with dark pools um i think the 41860 was probably the biggest one uh to pay attention to uh, which is right i think i drew it too didn't i yeah, right there. Okay. Yeah. So this is, this held. So price ran up at the open from that dark pool. Uh, it ran up and found a top here and then it came back down and settled right around this, uh, this other dark pool here. And it kind of hovered around it. 
And then of course we closed right on a dark pool for 2020. Just to show you that again. Oh, 419.20. So a uh, pretty big level and um, it, it's not bullish or bearish, the dark pulls right now. So in that case, what you want to do is you want to look at the uh, options flow. And I think you'll notice that um, while the top one is a call and that's good and it's a good size, 1.7 million, it's dwarfed by the next three puts. Uh, those are 6 million right there. And we see almost the whole page of puts. If you recall yesterday, there were a lot of calls that sprung up. So I, I'm back to bearish here. Um, well, I was bearish yesterday. I, this, this rally today, I, I don't think was technical. I think it was really what did relate to, um, to the debt ceiling. And you can still see the trend here is very, very red. Lots of, lots of puts. Moving on to the time cycle data. Um, it is bad. So this suggests we could see more of a sell-off. Although today's rally could, could curl this thing back up a little bit. Uh, NASDAQ actually tried to curl up after uh, dropping yesterday. So that's neutral. Um, and then the S&P is trying to curl back up. So that's neutral. So we have some potential good stuff here. And as you recall, a little bit further to drop. And then we ha do have a projected uh, uh, upswing here. And uh, the Qs have a little more to rise. And then we have a small uh, downswing. So mostly we're going to see some chop. I don't know if the market's going to really be able to make new highs. Uh, and it really does have to hold 4,200. I think we closed above 4,200 on the SPX. Let's see here. Let's just go to the day chart and SPX. Yeah, it got right above 4,200. Uh, this, as you know, is an absolute critical danger zone. Um, and the fact that it pretty much closed on it um, is interesting. Again, not bullish or bearish uh, tomorrow. Tuesday, if we can run away from this thing, uh, then I would say we're looking at a more bullish situation. But um, at the moment, on the closing candle, you can see um, a little more bearish. And um, the fact that this went up a little bit tells me maybe there's not too much of a run left. All right, I got one more thing to show you, and then we're going to go through the trades. Um, the, the big money guys, they're selling still. You can see here that... Um, Look at that. That was a massive amount of selling uh, yesterday. A massive amount, um, more than the day before. So you can see this trend is definitely keeps heading down toward, oh, that's ETFs, I'm sorry. I wanted to look at the stocks, much different picture. Um, you can see 133 sells and 52 buys. Mm -hmm. Day before was 103 sells and 25 buys. It's absolutely trending down. The big money has absolutely been selling, not buying. Now, again, today might have been a difference. Today, maybe it's flopped the other way. But I, I'm still seeing a really bearish picture here. And if the debt ceiling stuff wasn't looming, um, I could see, uh, you know, holding some short trades over the weekend. But we're not going to do it. In fact, we did take one long trade. It was uh, on the stock called AI. We'd actually did a credit spread. It's a high probability trade. Um, I think that's it. Let's just quickly run through uh, the trades. There they are. So my first trade um, was at 812. And again, we had the bear signal up here. They always come at the top. We need to validate. In this case, it's interesting because this one validated way up here. Actually, the dot was kind of in place when the signal came. So to be conservative, I would try to clear these wicks. And we did. Uh, could have gone in on any of these because the chop index dropped. The fact that it was sitting on the 50-day moving average was concerning to me. 
Um, but then finally on this particular candle, it looked like it broke away from the 50 and the chop index dropped. So in and out one candle, good trade. It was, I think the only easy trade today. Uh, the rest of them had some drawdowns that were a little bit scary. Um, so this one entered at 932, got out at uh, 945. If you look at the trade log, there is a 10 minute difference. that says we got out at 935 instead of 945. Um, and you can see as soon as we got in, it pulled back. Why didn't I exit? Because this is an exit signal. Well, this support across here was too big. And there was also a, an order block, a buy block. So I was actually looking for it to touch here and, and, and give us a spring up. We didn't get a massive string, but we got a spring and we made money on that trade, but it did draw down in through here. Uh, the next one, I think had an even bigger drawdown. Uh, went in here, it was just about profitable down in here. And then it swung back the other way. We got an exit signal here. I did not take it. And the reason was, again, the same level that I believed would, would cause uh, resist support here, I, believe, I believed would cause uh, resistance here. And it really did. So we, t we, we did well by hanging on to it. Those are just scary. Came on back down and we made a profit. But this is all about knowing where your key levels are. Uh, then the next trade came in at 11.38, and this is just easy, a little more textbook, although the bull signal was real old. It came in way back here, and there were no dots, so we had to clear, guess what, the same level. Um, and so we cleared it, and the chop did drop, but I waited for a long time. And you can't see them now, but there were order blocks here, and you don't want, if you can see there's sellers lined up here, you really don't want to go in too early. So here is where we climbed above the order blocks and here's where we had a nice drop and chop. So that gave me pretty good confidence when in, uh, but you'll notice every one of these trades I was in, not all of them, a lot of them I was in longer than usual. This was a little more typical trade, got in, chop dropped. Uh, we had a very fresh bull signal. Um, it confirmed uh, here on these dots. And by the way, that's that same old level we kept seeing. This is a dark pull level. Uh, and when we crossed here, the chop index drop went in, got out of the next candle. So not bad, six and zero. Oh, and uh, what did I say I made again? Um, 38 per contract, Lee made 44. Um, and again, you can see that uh, 40 contracts, for me, is $1,500 profit. Uh, Lee trades 20, made $44, so that's 880. You could trade 80 contracts, you could trade 100, you could trade as many as you want. It doesn't take that much capital. And you can see that uh, 80 contracts would have been a $3,000 day. And back to the measly, you know, five contracts, um, you know, if you were leave five contracts to $220, that's back to that 60,000 a year. And this takes uh, only about um, less than $1,000 to, to trade five contracts. I think that's remarkable. So that's it, guys. I hope these are helpful. I uh, love any comments, feedback, likes, anything like that would be cool. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. See ya.